Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Chris Yakimachuk. Now, he is a certified personal trainer with over 30 years of experience. He is working with the top fitness coaches in both the U.S. and in Canada, Yak's Gym, Host Gym. He is the host gym for Olympia 2022 Vegas, and he currently works with professional and non-professional athletes, as well as mainstream clientele wishing to tone up and or lose weight. Offering training sessions for beginners, intermediate, or advanced, Chris is a national judge and a two-term past president of the SABBA. And so this is Chris. Um, or we also call him Yak. Um, all right, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me and good morning. Yes, and you know, my my show basically came about based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And one of the things that I like to um, ask is, do you have a time in your business or personal life where you experienced a tough situation and then how did you get back on track? Well, there's always going to be hiccups in any business. So anyone watching this, if they have a laundry mat or online business, there are always going to be good days and bad days and um, uh, general trends and, you know, six months, perhaps a couple of years and you see different things. Um, I think that when, uh, how I met Sheila was in my new club in town square and um, it was shortly after my son passed away. A young a young man so it, it's a little bit uncomfortable to talk about but yet really uh you know it was a tough time because he was so young and he was supposed to be running one of my clubs in you know in vegas here so that's kind of a real uh that's reality you know he could have all the money he could have all the this and that and that but without you know so it, it, it humbles you very quickly um you know so no one's immune to anything including myself obviously um and i coped through that they would i didn't know how i did to be honest but what i did is uh I buried myself under a lot of work i think what a lot of entrepreneurs would do yeah kept myself busy i do not work at home um i prefer not to do anything at home to be honest <laughs> I, I mean i like home but uh, truth of the matter, I'm more extroverted person, so I'm probably well suited for my kind of club. I always have people come in um, into my club, and I enjoy talking with people and seeing this. So, uh, keeping not buried in work, but amongst people, it made the time pass a little bit quicker, and time does heal. Maybe it won't be 100%, perhaps, um, but anyone who's gone through several experiences, it does get better got to have faith and I, I have blessed with some very great members in here really that kind of were uh, you know the pat compassionate and you know just encouraged me through the time and eventually you know you know a few months passed by six months you know a year and now it's like hmm okay mm -hmm. you know and then life goes on and then you're trying to you use that as a motivation to get to another level um you know whether your beliefs are this and that but they're looking down and say, you know what, I'm going to impress them and try to do something to another level uh, and use that as a motivation and to keep yourself so you don't get into a depression. And uh -huh. unfortunately, nowadays, if anyone's listening, uh, you know, many of you are probably at home and 
if something like that to happen, if I had to be, uh, you know, locked in a small office or a bedroom with the laptop on my blanket <laughs> or whatever, I'd be like, uh, it would be tough. So I was kind of lucky in some regards, what I went through and, you know, uh, so I would share that with everyone. You know, you have to just be mentally strong uh, and make the best of your situation. Right. Surround yourself with good people and help you. Yes. Uh, one of the things that my mentor, Tony Robbins, says is that uh, pain happens, but suffering is optional. And, you know, you embrace all the grieving process in our own way. I was also right there. I, in fact, when we first, when I first walked in, no one was in your gym and we started talking. And the next thing you know, we both realized we both lost our sons very, you know, close in time. And there's something about that, that if you haven't had such a loss, it's, it's a different conversation that you have. Um, with other people, because people can't fathom what that really is like on a person unless you've walked in those shoes. And it's a very tough journey. So to have people around you, community, and and then to have a good wellness practice really makes a big difference. And um, both of us, it was during this whole pandemic time, which the world went upside down at the same time. Now, how did that uh, affect you as far as um, your business and just uh, membership and everything during that crazy time with the pandemic? <laughs> well, it affected uh, my type of business pretty extreme. Many of the many of the smaller, more modest sized clubs like mine, they just simply close the door. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been established here over 12 years in this particular club that I'm sitting in today. We have um, a re really loyal base. Um, but it, you know, when I lied to you, they said it didn't affect it. Of course it did. People were scared. They didn't know what the heck's going on. Then we were forced to shut down, you know, and I was really headstrong, like, what the hell's going on? Like, I, I want to be there. Uh, so, yeah, it did affect everyone, lost some members. And, uh, you know, um, then it, it, it kind of changed, uh, you know, several months later on. People were, you know, they were saying, like, I gained a COVID-10 and this and that. They had more excuse. Right. And then um, basically a lot of my clientele in my gym are kind of younger entrepreneurs, uh, some not so young, some are my age. Uh, but nonetheless, there's good quality people that come in here and they realize in their businesses, and, and many of them are like, I use dentists because I have several close friends that are all dentists. They have different practices. Uh, you know, not tied to each other. So they're all competition to each other, but everyone's super cool. Yeah. And no one wakes up. You're almost conditioned as a child. Oh, I'm not going to want to go to the dentist, you know? So a lot of these people, you know, they're in jobs where, you know, you don't, people don't want to come and see them. Mm. It's almost because they have to. In my kind of facility, for the most part, people come in here because they want to, not because they have to. If they don't want to, they don't have to come in. So they come in here and what I did observe, uh, you know, even in this last year more so, that things have opened up and people are more comfortable going out, Sheila, I did notice that people are like, they're not doing it just for the physical. Mm -hmm. like when I used to compete in the 1990s, there was just big people went to the gym, you know, bodybuilders, and you know, it had this stigma and it was a cult-like following. And, you know, and it's almost a pandemic made fitness more popular than it's ever been in history. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'll mention to him because uh, he's a he's a you know probably one of the most famous Olympians, uh, Jay Cutler, is a friend of mine in Las Vegas. Here, I stole it from him actually because he mentioned it in a show that people who go to the gym nowadays aren't people like him. Yeah. You know, back in the day, they're people who are just everyday people that are going to the gym now more for the mental relief and the yeah. mental de-stressing. Um, wound up, what's going on in the world, all over the world. You could turn on every channel. They come home, a lot of them, a lot of people are stuck, as I mentioned earlier in the program, they're just literally stuck at home, working at home. Right. So they get their little one hour, hmm, I didn't get my butt down to the gym. It does so much, not mentally, physically, obviously, but a lot with, with the mental. So I've noticed that a lot. Yes. That's, it's mm -hmm. a good thing. It is, it is. It does, there's, there's something about that, um, 
I don't know, the, the mental part is so important to me and, and even my daughter and, and my kids, they're all very active. And so that's something that's so important to be able to exercise for your, even, you know, you think, okay, yeah, your physical body, you want to get into shape, all this good stuff, but it's the mind that helps you do, I don't know, the wellness stuff later, because you've had that hour or so at the gym and it, it just makes a difference whereas during the pandemic a lot of us couldn't go anywhere and and it was you know even if you have something at home it's not the same because you're no. getting out and you're out and you see other people and you smile at each other and you talk and you know and you do your workout and it's it's just it's a different situation so now when you were like a young kid did you think when i grew up i'm gonna have a gym or how did that show up in your life how did that wellness show up in your life that you wanted to make it um, a business as well as just part of your lifestyle oh that's a that's a topic for another show sheila you're giving oh. me some good questions here <laughs> that one my background's chemistry so i started off tipping beakers um kind of an egghead i guess you could say and i worked for the government tipping beakers for almost 20 years Oh, wow. uh, in Canada. So the lab supervisor, it was, a, it was good at the time. And then when I opened my first club, uh, actually my first club was in a four level house, four level split, um, and that I got so busy. I had people coming in and out of my house. It did not look good. It's like, what goes on in that house? <laughs> you know, like, uh, and so I ended up buying a, a nice club. You know, I ended up putting tanning in there and everything. And then I actually enjoyed being there more than I did working for someone else even if it was the government, it was a good job. I'll never say anything bad. They took care of me very well. But once you work for yourself, uh, now I don't think I could work for someone if I wanted to, <laughs> you know, and then eventually just wanted to move to the United States, expand a little bit. So that's kind of where it started. Right. Wow. Okay. And so now I've been in, in your gym over there um, in Vegas. There's a couple different ones. You're in the different one that I haven't visited yet. Right. <laughs> So um, you have, what is the main thing for people listening in that are like, okay, I'm going to get back to the gym. I'm going to start again, or, um, and they want to have this wellness practice and they want to have a, a ritual or routine of actually getting into shape for the mind and the body connection. Where would you say somebody like that is to start? Well, I, I've said this in my some of my YouTubers, you know, if you're motivated or even thinking about doing it right now, uh, get your ass and go and do it. Because <laughs> if you're motivated and you somehow do not do it, you're sure to heck not going to do it when you are not motivated. <laughs> yes. So the chances are, you know, if you're a little bit fire under the feet, get in there. Um, I use my I'll use my gym. I'll brag it up a little bit. Like we do have a lot of trainers in there. I handpicked all my trainers. So they all uh, have very good experience. So mm -hmm. anyone coming in, I'm going to say with a 100% confidence, you're always in good hands. That That's big for me because it, it's a quality. Um, unfortunately, when I moved into Vegas, they all seem to be box gyms in here, mm -hmm. which I was really surprised. So you could drive down any of the best steak in Vegas and the best this and best that, you know. <laughs> but for the most part, there's a lot, there's a, there's a few exceptions, but for the most part, they're, I don't want to, I call them some $6 gyms sometimes or Walmart of equipment and this and that, and they're volume based. And, uh, and I appreciate anyone budgeting and, you know, everyone goes through some times and you got to do what you got to do. And that's what exactly what you do, you have to do. Um, I wanted to offer the people of Las Vegas, Nevada, I sound like a politician, <laughs> but I did want to offer a, a place where it's very modestly priced. Mm -hmm. so it's not going to be your $250 super high-end club with all the different amenities. Uh, and I found over the years doing this since about 96, you know, especially, you know, I, I see younger entrepreneurs or business people, they have a time budget. They want some badass equipment. They want to go in there and they want to be super clean and not in a volume based, even like yourself. See, if you have a 45, I see you come into your gym with your daughter. Yeah. Uh, man, we're just going to catch a flight here we have this much time you right. cannot actually even go to a gym in vegas 
without waiting for 15 minutes or 20 minutes to get on a piece of equipment or oh, now it has to be cleaned down and say, so you sure the heck are not going to make a flight in 45 minutes. If yeah. you know, even though airports across the street from my one club, you know, so I, I'm trying to give the opportunity. You could come in here. We have a membership cap, one of a few, and my prices are so modest that most people when they come in there is like, wow, this is pretty much what I'm paying anyway. Right. Why am I fighting crowds? It's clean. And having said all that, there's still a fair amount of people. They're still a little bit not certain about what what do we have now? Monkeypox and, you know, still COVID. Yeah. So some people are taking their health a little bit more serious and or are more aware of it. And I'm not picking sides or nothing because, you know, it's real, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, you do have a, a, an opportunity to now train where you're not in a volume base. So it gives you a little bit of uh, easy to social distance. Right, right. Yes. And I, I love that. The fact that I had made up my mind, I was like, that's it. I'm getting back on track with my wellness. And, you know, the same thing with the, the pandemic and getting stuck at home. And I, I do have a beautiful um, sports center where I live. That's like a country club thing. But I'm always by that airport picking up friends or um, often I have like small group uh, programs that I do where we all get together for like a week and work really on different things that we're focused on. And I said, I need to have somewhere that I can go that I can work out while I wait. A lot of times the flights are delayed because of the, we have really bad winds here. And so I'm stuck for like four or five hours. And I, I'm like, I don't wanna just shop and eat. Like that doesn't like align with my goals. <laughs> so that I want, I said, I wish there was like a wellness place I could go, a, a gym that's gonna be really convenient. And there I found you. And yeah. so I manifested your whole gym. <laughs> <laughs> with that yeah, no kidding. And and I, I think it was pretty, I don't know, how, how long have you been by the airport there at the town square? Well, officially, it's probably been about five months. Okay, yeah. So I walked in when you had just really moved in there not too right. long. That was great. And that was exactly what I was wishing for. It was such a need. And to be able to go, maybe you do eat something out. Or, or go out shopping and, and you go see a movie, but then to be able to go work out um, or you fly in and you have somewhere, if you go to Vegas a lot, where you can come every month, if you're going to do trade shows or doing something where you have to be here often, uh, it just makes sense to me. I, I think it's great. Yeah. No, thank and you. It's very affordable, very affordable. So, you know, my daughter and I go and we love it and it's flying in and out from... You know, I work in Beverly Hills as well, and that's my main home base. And so uh, I'm flying back and forth with clients all the time. And, you know, I need to show a house or do something, uh, teach a class over there. And <laughs> so um, I need to have, if I have that place, I can go work out. And then, you know, you can shower there. You, it's got all the amenities yeah. you need. And then you can fly out, do your work, and you didn't miss your day. And that was the thing that I felt I was really missing was, you know, going back and forth. Then I miss a day. Then I miss another day. And the next thing you know, you've missed a week. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that makes a big difference. Yeah. Definitely. Now, uh, for those people listening in, I, I, I know you're doing something with this uh, Mr. Olympia or Olympia yeah. for 2022. Can you share a little bit about what that's about, what that means and how that works? Well, the Weeders uh, ran that show historically forever. And then uh, Jake Wood uh, purchased the show a couple of years ago and moved it to Florida mm. for a couple of years. And it's the first year to bring it back to Vegas. Yes. And uh, it's a pretty big thing. And it seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, my roots are kind of bodybuilding. And, you know, in that, uh, I don't want to scare anyone that's not into bodybuilding um, because my gym, I love bodybuilding. But yeah. the fact of the matter is, when I say there's just a lot of people, my customers are more people who just demand a little bit more privacy, a little bit more nicer equipment. It's very premium equipment, actually. Um, but I do want to treat the athletes very well. They're coming from all over the world for this. And it's the host hotels, like literally right down the street. Oh, nice. So yes. it'll be a nice place. We have a beautiful 1,000 square foot room, cardio room, so they could do posing or whatever. It's going to be a nice little attraction for that week. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the meantime, people that are coming in and checking out, they could see, um, you know, what we're all about as well. But gives them an opportunity to train at a really nice club that's super convenient. Oh, that is. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And it, it'll hopefully, it's going to be a nice little feather in the cap, and hopefully it'll get a little, a little bit of uh, uh, traction as well in the new business. Yes, yes. So that is that is pretty cool. And so that's something that I'll have to come in that week, especially and visit everybody, <laughs> see all yeah. the Olympian bodybuilders and everything. That'll be fun. And so, there's so many disciplines. It's not just bodybuilding. There's obviously bikini, physique, and everything that you could think of. So it's it, there's something for everyone in that show. Yes, yes. And that's something. Uh, there's a lot of discipline that goes into that. Um, whole thing that Mm -hmm. uh, is just pretty incredible you have to be very disciplined yeah yeah Yeah. so for those tuning in that are the everyday people and like your everyday listeners and and clientele that go to go to your gym what tips do you have for getting into shape or wellness what is somebody how many times do you need to go to a gym a week to see a difference what what is the requirements or what do you what do you see that works the best for everyday people okay. that's a more fair question um anything if you went, go once a week are you going to change your body dramatically no i'd be blowing smoke out your butt by saying yeah that's going to happen uh whoever anything you do is going to be uh, you know more than anything you're uh doing anything nothing sorry for most people three times a week is not too much to ask and I don't care, Tony Robbins, uh, anyone, you're running a big schedule. Three times a week is not. Now, four is ideal. You don't have to go, you know, five times a week. You need your days off. Right. You need your days off for recovery. Right. Uh, so you stay motivated. You need that day off for recovery. Your, you know, your, uh, your cortisol levels, your negative hormones, mm. they elevate when you're stressing your body. So you need a couple of days of rest. So I always suggest like a say a Wednesday, Sunday, and then, you know, train a few days, take a day off. I always have a nice split like that. You know, now someone who's a little bit, uh, you know, they don't have the time luxury, you know, three times, say it's Monday, Tuesday, whenever they have basket weaving on Wednesday, then they might go Thursday, take the weekend off. Mm. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, three times a week you could, and if you're training smart and efficiently, I have a lot of people, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm kind of just doing this from, from experience, you know, if they know what they're doing, you're you're coupling that with a decent diet, you could hit, you know, your back, chest, shoulders, you know, for the ladies, you know, shoulders, back, legs, mm-hmm. and uh, the three the three major body uh, groups like that. And cardio, you could do on your own time anywhere, or even in the gym after. But you can change your uh, physique uh, quite dramatically if you're doing things. And the big number one thing is. That's my finger pointing in there. <laughs> uh, consistency. And and any mentor, when I was a kid, who I watched from Dorian Yates to anyone, they all said, just be consistent. Because there's yeah. going to be days that were you 110%, maybe or 93%. You're always shooting for that 100. Did you do everything you could? Realistically, there's some days you just, man, how did I even drag my butt in here? Mm. But almost certainly, you'll always feel better when you leave. That's right. almost a given. Uh, and the other thing is just being consistent. Yeah. And people don't understand what those words mean. But when mm-hmm. you're taking a day off here and a take off there, yeah, you're kind of you just you're holding yourself back. But even if you're just doing as best as you can for that day and you're doing consistent, you will see a change in your physique. Right. Right. So that's it. That that was my thing. Was like I need to have this this gym near the airport because if I'm there. Um, one or two days a week waiting for the group or I'm delayed or whatever, or somebody wants to shop over there at the center, the town center, I'm stuck. And then I miss my opportunity with the drive time and everything. So this to me is like, that was part of sewing in the consistency that I was missing. And so if you're traveling a lot, think about um, how can you have a, a gym that you can attend wherever you end up going if you're traveling in the U.S. or however, what options, like look at the people that are coming in, the Olympia, these bodybuilders, they have to have a host gym. They need, they're not going to just do the little hotel thing. They're, you know, with the, the with the treadmill and nothing else or whatever, you know, they're nice, but but it's not going to 
fit the bill for what they want to do. So to stay consistent, that was like a priority. They had to plan that out. And so I think it's the same thing with just everyday people, especially uh, busy entrepreneurs. You're running your business. I'm running a business. You need to make time for yourself um, so that you can do your work and take care of all the people you work with. Or even if you're a busy mom or dad and, and you're working and you think, oh, well, I don't have time. But do you have time to end up in the hospital? Do you have time to be sick? Do you have time to do all that? That's going to be worse and cut into your costs way more, uh, especially if you have an illness or something going on that may be preventable with, with health and fitness as a choice. So I think that's something that really that consistency and it's in anything. Are you reading every day? Are you working your mind? Are you working your body? Are you doing some sort of whatever you're walking in nature or spiritual connection or whatever prayer, whatever you do? Those are all things that you see the top one and 2%. This is something the most you, you say, oh, these people are so successful. And yet that's their priority. They have that time for themselves to take care of their bodies and their minds and, and do those things. And you have, it's weird. This is the most bizarre thing to me, Yak, um, is that for me, when I wasn't working out during this crazy pandemic and I was going through my grieving and I wasn't able to be as consistent with the you know pandemic and all, I didn't get as much done in my business. I have like- brought that up. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Tell me about that. Tell me more. I don't know. <laughs> you pretty much just nailed it on the head. It, it, it's something about it. Just put your mindset in another yeah. place. Um, and I, I don't know if it's just just the, the, your hormones and endorphins you get released. Uh, just what I was mentioning, when you finish a workout, you almost always feel better. I don't know right. how many times, you know, I know I have a thick day. I'm like, oh, am I going to be able to work out today? And then I'm, I'm taking care of everybody. And I don't train a lot of people anymore. I have trainers to do that. And I'm trying to work on my business a little bit more now than, you know, working it. Uh, so sometimes I'm like, hmm. And it kind of wears on you like, oh, I'm taking care of everyone, but I'm neglecting myself. And then uh, and you have these things in your head. And then someone comes in and I say, you know what? I, I'll still have a couple people I'll, I'll work with that I just have for 15 years. So, yeah. I, you know, they won't show up. And, if, and you know, they're good people. So uh, you know, perhaps even a couple that are mentors of myself. So I, uh, you know, it, it's a little give and take. So I ended up working out and I said, you know what, I'm going to catch, I you know, catch the train and do a workout with them mm -hmm. and almost hundred percent I accomplished it. Well, they got taken care of. I did. I'm in a totally different mindset and I go and crush the rest of the day. Exactly. And it, it just changes things so much. Yes. It's that thing about, and entrepreneurs, especially we're like type a people like naturally. So it's like, okay, I'm just going to, I have this due date and I'm going to just push through and get all this stuff done, uh, marketing stuff. I remember you're doing marketing when I walked in that one time, all these things that you have to do and you push through and it's eight hours, t sometimes 12. How many 12 hour days do we all have as entrepreneurs? Yeah. So many. So that that's something that when you give that gift of time to yourself for wellness and self-care and exercise and health, I don't know. It's like magic. I get eight hours of work done in four. It, it doesn't, it's like, what is this? How is this? It doesn't make sense to the mind, you know, to the, you know, somebody doing a, maybe a, an accountant, if they said, well, if you pay, if you put eight hours in to your work, you're going to get out eight hours. But if you take care of you first, you're going to get out 16 hours out of the eight. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it's like you're getting interest because yeah. you take care of That's yourself. That's kind of a cool analogy. Yeah, it's it's just really makes all the I just I'm like, how am I doing more self care now again and getting more done? It's it's wild. It's so much better. It really yeah. is. So now what for those people that struggle with that consistency, maybe they join that gym or your gym or any gym, um, you know, New Year's <laughs> and then you know, two weeks later, it's over <laughs> or a month later, 
what advice do you have for people that are in that realm that are that really their their heart wants to do it but they get pulled back to the responsibilities or whatever's going on in their life one of the well, I don't want to admit this. One of the first books I've read, I was really young, uh, probably a young teenager, and I read uh, Arnold Encyclopedia, and he wrote about this. You know, it's yeah. very unfortunate that people uh, are budgeting that they can't take care of their health. And yeah. that, that's sad. You should, everyone should be able to take care of their health and well being, um, regardless of you, what you're getting paid or what have you, uh, to at least have the tools there for you. So um, anyway, having said that, you know, someone coming in and they're, you know, even if they are budgeting, I have uh, personal trainers and I'm not pushing my personal trainers because a lot of people, they don't need personal trainers. Now, I already mentioned just about 35.8 seconds ago, I have a few people they do work with. They just probably won't show up if I wasn't working with them. Mm -hmm. But they love that accountability. I said, I can't even work with anyone. I says, well, but there's a trade-off and we help each other or whatever. There's always a reason something that it's always a good thing, but uh, being consistent, having that accountability, you know, mm. perhaps it's a training partner, a spouse, loved one, friend, whatever, uh, you know, you don't feel up for the job. Oh, okay. Your partner is going to be like, you know what? We got to get her butt down there. We right. still got 40 pounds. You, you got to fit in that wedding dress or whatever. I hear it all the time. Yeah. And then the other person, you know, for them to be not up to the job, you know, but for next time you might reciprocate that. But for both of them, your chances out of three times, all both of them not going to be up for the job are very slim to none. So mm -hmm. if you have a good partner, if that one person's consistently not up for the task, you got to get another partner, <laughs> you know, yeah. someone who's going to uh, take care of their weight, you know, and motivate you. But I'm trying to have uh, some in-house trainers. So mm. if anyone comes in off the street, if they need help, you know, because sometimes you don't, um, you know, lastly, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember the number off my head, but it, it applies to almost everything. You, you just need that routine mm -hmm. and you can establish, um, uh, you maybe perhaps you could help me out there. Uh, you know, it's after two or three weeks, you, you yeah. get in that, you know what I'm saying? It's whether you. It's to the habit. It, Correct. It, yeah, it takes our brains and our bodies time to have it become a habit. And then it's like second nature. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then for that reason, uh, someone really say, you know what? I want to work with you. <laughs> hey, where am I going to put you in a book? Okay, I take a look at the book. And it's not that I don't want to work with you. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to work with you. And I know this from experience. And I could probably talk okay and keep them for a lifelong client. But the right. fact of the matter is deep down, uh, whether they're budgeted or not budgeting, you say, you know what, I just want to uh, get my beak wet, know what the hell I'm doing yeah. with 100% confidence. I'm doing, I'm doing nice technique. I'm not going to injure myself. Mm -hmm. And a side effect is I'm going to look pretty damn good because you're going to see a good result. And after going through all the body parts, even twice, mm -hmm. even three times, with 100% confidence, I'll say this because I've been doing it and I'm very meticulous when I train people with techniques and stuff uh, for safety reasons and, and, and multiple reasons. But with confidence, by that third week, they're like, OK, you look like you've been in the gym now for a couple of mm -hmm. years. And when mm -hmm. you go to some of these big box gyms, yeah, you know, there could be I don't even want to guess how many people in there and the owners and in fact, give a monkey's butt if you're doing things correctly or yeah. not. And it's like, uh, you see all kinds of, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, that's a big, big deal. Just get a little bit of knowledge. And then even if you're getting with someone for two or three weeks, get that habit formed and it's, and it gets easier. I mean, would I be lying to you? No, it gets easier. It does. It's yeah. like anything. If yeah. it was, I tell people this when I'm mentoring them and helping those. If it was that easy, um, well, now I'm dating myself, uh -huh. fellow Canadian Pamela Anderson. I said, every, every woman would just pop a pill, you look like Pamela Anderson. That was right. kind of who I used to use as an example uh -huh. 25 years ago, maybe. <laughs> Who's Pamela Anderson? I don't, I'm just joking. But the point is, if it was that easy, there's effort involved. Uh -huh. So, you know, you have to, you know, anything that's worth obtaining, we all know this. So you you got to put some efforts in it. But that consistency and breaking that habit and 
getting to, so it is just so familiar it's you're gonna feel like wow four weeks into it and you took a couple days off you're gonna feel like, i'm a little bit kind of anxious i gotta get you know release some and work out and, and you hear that all the time mm. you get into a habit so much extreme that when you don't go to the gym you go like i, I gotta get in this little quick workout i'll feel better and yeah and i do right right so yeah. anyway i hope uh your viewers uh found that interesting because that's uh very very true that's very real yes very much so now uh we are coming to the end of our talking time so i'd like for you to share how can people find your gym and uh, maybe if they're coming into vegas um how can they learn more about it or if you live here um could you share about that okay um well yaks fitness is yaks fitness so pretty easy to find that um i do have a youtube channel yaks fitness um it actually has a lot of tutorials. I never, uh, I put a lot of, I don't know if there's 60 videos on there, but they're individual of exercises. It's, it's pretty good. It's, it's actually really good quality. Um, it was just for educational purposes, but I will be adding into that now. Now our Instagram, Yaks Fitness Town Square. Um, that, that's probably where we're known in Facebook, obviously. So it's pretty easy to find. Our website is yaksfitness.net. And there was three day passes on there. Um, we do have some really nice uh, uh, merchandise clothing to once you go yak. <laughs> uh, yeah. We have a lot of funny once slogans. You go yak, you never go back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah, and even some of the ladies stuff to kiss my yak. Um, I mean, it was just catchy stuff, and they actually sell pretty well. It, the idea is that that's just like publicity and you know branding purposes. But mm -hmm. Yaks Fitness is fairly easy to find. Just even if you uh, hyperlink off the website come in for a pass, come and visit me. I'm usually there mid afternoon until the evening, but a uh, beautiful gym. And I'm going to say hundred percent confidence. Anyone coming in is going to be impressed and the quality equipment. I did bring it in from uh, Montreal, uh, same equipment, Cirque du Soleil. Uh, they helped design some of the pieces. Um, it's just high end equipment, but it runs so nice. It really is. I use my own saying here, Mercedes of equipment, because it really is. Uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about when you come in. So you do uh, follow us and try to follow our page and uh, uh, be interactive with us and come on down for sure for a free workout. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you again, Yak, for mm -hmm. being a guest on the show. And for those tuning in, we'll be back after these messages. Stay tuned. Thank you. All right. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack. And today we have some incredible things to share. Uh, I'm sharing about a special thing that's been around forever that I just really found out more about, and that is sprouting and growing microgreens. That's right. So along with fitness and making sure that while you travel, you have gyms to go to, the other thing to also add into your life or provide maybe uh, at your place of business is a healthy diet or healthy meal options such as microgreens and sprouts. Benefits that this makes to our health. So I started doing this process every day adding sprouts and microgreens to my diet since January 1st, 2023, and I am feeling more energized. It is just incredible. That has made a huge difference. It also gives you an extra edge for recession, recession proofing because you are actually saving so much money growing your own sprouts and microgreens at home freshest and best sprouts and microgreens those tiny nutrient packed plants that pack a big punch when it comes to boosting productivity energy and focus you might be thinking sprouts really aren't they just those little things that you see at the salad bar that no one even eats but trust me this is some wild stuff i mean the energy is incredible all you need is a jar some water and a few seeds and you can have a batch of fresh spouts in just a few days so really it's like five to seven days um, for me and you do have to rinse um, soak and rinse and let sit for 12 hours and then each day you rinse 
uh, twice a day as they grow. Uh, even my workouts have been far better. And all I've added is about a handful. Oh, you like uh, I had a nice little vegetable omelet this morning and I added a handful of sprouts. Then for lunch, I'll have some sprouts mixed in with my regular green salad. And for dinner, I'll add it maybe as a garnish to my soup. And that's about it. And for me, that's that's just been incredible. The difference is night and day. The real benefits of sprouts and microgreens comes from the fact that they are jam-packed with nutrients. For example, alfalfa sprouts are rich in antioxidants, which can help protect your body from free radicals and reduce the risk of chronic, chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. Mung bean sprouts, on the other hand, are loaded with protein, making them a great plant-based source of these essential nutrients, which is pretty cool. So how can you have sprouts help boost your productivity, energy, and focus? They all come down to the nutrients that they provide. For example, the high levels of vitamins and minerals in sprouts can help your brain function, leading to improved concentration and focus. And because sprouts are so low in calories and high in fiber, they can also help you feel full and satisfied, which can also lead to improved energy levels throughout the day. In short, sprouts are simple and tasty and a great way to boost that productivity, energy, and focus for work and play. I started adding them and then my, my uh, kids started adding them to their foods as well because, you know, they follow what we do, not what we tell them to do as far as our kids or grandkids go, that is for sure. So I have, they love them. I mean, <laughs> it's just interesting because it's almost like when I first started eating these sprouts and microgreens, my body just craved more. Like I just, there was something in them that really was helping me for sure. And the kids really like them too, which you would never think they would. So next time you're looking for a quick and easy way to give your body a nutrient boost consider adding some sprouts or microgreens to your diet your body and your brain will thank you so some of the here are 10 benefits of the microgreens and one of the things if you look into broccoli sprouts they have something in them that is really powerful for just really giving you energy. So that's something else that I have been eating a lot of the broccoli sprouts and micrograins as well as all the other types. So they are high in nutrition. Microgreens and sprouts are jam packed with nutrients, including antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids. They are low in calorie, so both microgreens and sprouts are the lowest in calorie, making them an excellent choice for those looking to maintain a healthy weight. Um, I am following an incredible diet called uh, Nutritional Fitness, and I just interviewed the CEO of that company who is a cellular biologist. So I have been following this program and going down on my sizes and feeling more energized and healthier. And yes, microgreens and sprouts are definitely allowed on this diet. So it has gone really well hand in hand with the program that I have been following. Uh, and it, I've been following this program for about six months and have had some great changes in health, off all medications, energized. And uh, again, for me, weight loss has been uh, part of the process, which has been incredible with less effort. So uh, I just started adding these new microgreens and sprouts into my life. And, you know, it saves a lot of money as uh, we're talking about recession proofing and uh, these interesting times just to be able to grow some fresh greens at home to add to your salads to add as a garnish or to have as a full meal and it really when they're this packed with nutri nutrition and i'm telling you this is crazy you just need two tablespoons of the seeds to sprout in the jar and you get like four or five cups of sprouts it is wild and so this this would last you depending if you're eating uh 
you know, every day if you're eating as a full sprout salad or if you're just using as a garnish, you can really save a lot of money adding these sprouts and microgreens to your diet. Not only that, but it benefits your health, which saves tons of money on medications and this and that. We won't even go there, but you know what I'm talking about. So that is something to think about. And it, I mean, it, it costs pennies a day to have your sprouts and the way I've, this is like my first week of growing my own because the cost savings are incredible and it's fresher. So growing at home is fresher. And so one of the things that's really um, kind of easy to do is you just start a new batch each day, five days a week or seven days. And then seven days later, your first batch is done or five days, depending on what you're growing. And then you just rotate. And so each day you'll have a fresh jar. If you're like, we're eating a, at least a jar and then um, about a tray of microgreens, but I have a large family. Um, and so that that's what's going on at the Mac Shack <laughs> and we are loving it. So, I, I mean, we're talking about 25 cents or so for each two, you know, five cups of microgreens. So that is pretty incredible. They are high in fiber. Both microgreens and sprouts are high in fiber, which can help you feel full and satisfied, leading to improved energy levels throughout the day. Easy to grow, again, both microgreens and sprouts are easy to grow at home, allowing you to have a cons constant supply of rich, nutrient-dense foods on a budget, just about any budget this can fit into. And actually the seeds, uh, I, I do get the highest quality organic uh, seeds that I can find and the little bit extra is worth it to me because it still comes down to about 25 cents for four or five cups of greens. So that is not bad. Uh, they're versatile. Microgreens and sprouts can be added to all kinds of dishes, salads, sandwiches, smoothies, and more, or eat, eaten as a main meal, which Doug, uh, when he comes on the air in a little bit, you will hear more about how he has really switched primarily to just sprouts and microgreens. They can improve your brain function. The high levels of vitamins and minerals in microgreens and sprouts can help support your brain function, leading to improved focus and concentration. And I confess, I am somebody that I probably do have a little bit of that ADD or ADHD, or I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, I don't really take anything but vitamins to help. And I have noticed a huge improvement improvement in my focus and concentration and I'm I'm one of those that gets hyper focused so I can actually get a lot of work done and when I'm focused on a project helping a client I am super zoned in and tuned in to what my clients need and that has brought me a lot of success and this eating these microgreens and sprouts has actually helped me focus even better now, it does boost your immu immune system. The nutrients in microgreens and sprouts can help boost the immune system, helping you stay healthy and productive. And this is a season. I have had a lot of friends come down with a flu or a cold or a cough or this or that. And I have been very grateful. I'm knocking on wood right now. Uh, I do go to the gym every day. I go out and see people <laughs> on a regular basis and travel uh, flying to and from a couple different states regularly and I have been well so far. Uh, I do do my best to use, I don't know what you want to call it, but you know, like cleanliness, wash your hands, wash your face, whatever. Um, and I wipe off at the gym, of course. I have some really nice gyms that I go to, but it really, it's just made a difference, I think, because I've been very lucky. Um, and my family has also, nobody has had an issue um, with any kind of anything so far this cold and flu season. 
So knock on wood. <laughs> and we've all traveled a lot recently, so that's kind of cool. Um, now, it does help support healthy digestion. The fiber in the microgreens and sprouts can help support healthy digestion, leading to improved energy levels and overall well-being. And they, it also has like this natural probiotic, prebiotic quality, completely natural. So it's going to help you digest your foods as well uh, if you're using as a garnish. So if you're at a certain point, um, there's a certain time where a lot of people start taking these digestive enzymes to help digest or avoid problems. And I haven't really needed to take anything the microgreens have really helped me though i've noticed that uh, a big difference in that so in just digestion and feeling full faster so that's that's pretty cool they are known microgreens and sprouts are known to reduce the risk of chronic diseases so the antioxidants in the microgreens and sprouts can help reduce the risk of chronic chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. Now, really, you got to look up the cancer-fighting qualities of your broccoli sprouts because that's that's pretty mind-blowing. I just um, learned all about that, and that's pretty cool. Now, convenient. Both microgreens and sprouts are easy to store and transport, making them a convenient choice for busy individuals on the go. So, um, my kids go to work, they go to school, and they literally pack salads. I have, <laughs> I know this is, I never told them to do this. They do this on their own, but they do pack a healthy salad for lunch or a snack. Um, because they all have full days out working and in school. And so they pack their own lunches many times and they're saving some money, but they're also eating really clean food that's natural, organic, and very healthy. So that just makes a difference. And again, it's, it's really, if you're a parent listening in, it's what you're the leader of your home, of your family, mom or dad, or whoever, grandma, grandpa, whoever's, you know, in charge or um, raising your kids, uh, children in your life, you're going to model and they're going to follow. If you're a teacher, um, when I was teaching, I had the blessing and opportunity to work as a Montessori teacher years ago and then as a Waldorf teacher. And both those schools, we, we brought our own lunches and the children brought their own lunches. Necessitated. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this, to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you out of the fog. If you weren't emotionally bound up in your situation, you would have more clarity. You would be able to see your best options for dealing with whatever comes up. If the version of yourself who has already walked through this rock bottom and come out the other end could go back in time and give you, the you right now, some advice, what would she say? Would she tell you to slow down, to stop rushing, that you don't have to have all the answers today. Would the future you recommend not making any major decisions without reviewing them first, particularly while you're still in the fog? Would she tell you that normal is going to look different for a while, but that you will feel normal again? In case we haven't invented time travel by the time you read this book, I'm here to tell you all of the above. I developed the Boots formula to help you learn to make choices, have a life shift, and make great things happen based on your individual values and best life vision. A change is going to happen, and it's worth it. There is a stage where it feels like everyone in your life is picking at you. Life itself may seem like it's trying its best to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All you hear is, that's a stupid idea, and... That's never going to work. And 
Who do you think you are? One of the hardest things for people to do is to realign and possibly walk away from anything and anyone that conflicts with their value systems. But you are going to discover that power within yourself. Through the activities and examples in this book, you will discover your true north and will be able to easily do what is needed to move forward with your life. Anything that hurts you, that doesn't resonate for you, that fights against what you want and believe in, you are going to give it the boot. Once you have turned your rock bottom moment into a positive, beautiful life shift, you can live your life on your terms. Your life will probably look different, but you get to design it this time. You are taking your life back and you are in charge, not anybody else. Sooner than you can imagine, you'll be in the career of your dreams or the relationship you always wanted. Because you are going to learn to develop healthy boundaries. Because you are going to do things differently along the way from here to there. You will begin to attract the people, the job, the place to live, all of the opportunities that align with who you are, your essence, your truth, not anybody else's, or even society's expectations of the way you're supposed to be. Once you have accepted that you are in charge of living your life and you begin to embody living your truth, people are going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. Then you're going to hear, hey, can you show me how you did that? I want to do it too. When you assess your peer group and up level according to your life purpose and vision, and once you have created a life shift for yourself, whatever that looks like, your life is not just full, it's fulfilled. Not only do you get more and better sleep, you wake up feeling rested and happy. You know that you're doing what you need to do. Yes, sometimes your heart will call you to leave certain friends or family members in order to find a more aligned peer group. From what I've seen, however, the ones who leave always return to lead their family and friends to success. Because your friends are more in alignment with your beliefs and value system, they support you while also pushing you toward your personal best. Life still involves work, but as a whole, it feels far more effortless. But you don't have to wait for the right person, right job, or right investment opportunity to show up. You can start living now so that every moment as you go forward through the process of recovering from rock bottom and redesigning your life is one more step to being the best version of you. The one who came... All right, if you are looking to reinvent life on your terms, if you are grieving, experiencing financial turmoil, career shifts, relationship problems, parenting, elder care, victims of abuse, breaking free from an addiction, or seeking an overall business and lifestyle redesign, then you may need a reboot. It is not size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.